Hey guys, today we're looking to update this Gateway gaming laptop. It's a pretty new machine. We wanted to add a little more storage. We're going to add this 970 EVO Plus. It's a PCIe NVMe 500 gigabyte generation 3 SSD. <laughs> and that was a mouthful. So hopefully this will be a pretty simple procedure. But when opening a laptop, one never knows. It's a pretty well equipped um, gaming laptop especially for the price of about 400 bucks. Um, I did a full review on this laptop in another video and I will have a link at the end for that if you're looking for a great deal on an inexpensive gaming laptop. Why did I decide to add some more storage to this machine? Well a couple reasons. One, the operating guide. They were kind enough to put a sketch of the interior of the machine. I did notice that there was an empty uh, NVMe drive as well as a SATA SSD empty drive space inside. So I don't have to open it up to see if I have space for more memory. Another thing, I did call Gateway to ask them on the motherboard what generation SSD it could accept, and they were unable to give me an answer on that. But I think a generation three is probably the very least it can accept. They're pretty fast. This um, 970 is rated at about 3,500 read and write speed per megabytes per second, and it's going to be pretty quick. Now. They have uh, Generation 4 has also come out, which is about 40 to 50 percent faster in real world use. I don't know if you'd really see that speed difference. And even Generation 5 is just now releasing. It's even faster, but often requires heat sinks. And not to mention, this, this um, SSD was only 30 bucks. Generation 4s are about double that. And I'm not really sure you would see any speed differential in your everyday tasks. Not to mention, I'm not even sure the motherboard on this machine is capable of doing Generation 4. So that's the reason I picked Generation 3. Another kind of interesting thing I found out when I called Gateway Support, this particular machine is only designed to hold up to one terabyte of memory. And there's already 512 installed. So anything bigger than this 512 wouldn't be recognized and would be just a waste of money anyway. So it's always good to find out as much as you can about your laptop or PC motherboard before you start installing new components. So I did do a little research before ever opening this up. So now let's get down to it. So I'm having to push pretty hard down on these to get them started. This takes a little time. You don't want to pressure anything too much. You definitely don't want to strip the heads. So make sure you have the right size screwdriver. I don't know if you can see this, but weirdly enough, it looks like there's a little rust on that thing. Brand new laptop, so that's kind of weird. Make sure you have good lighting. So we got three out, five out. Just got to do the other side now. They're all in this little container so I don't lose them. Also, make sure your laptop is sitting down on... I use like an old kitchen towel, a clean kitchen towel. Or something so you don't scratch it when you're putting a little pressure on these screws to get them out all right so I'm now removing the last screw it looks like if this one's the same they are all the same size and they all had a little bit of rust on them which I thought was weird now starts one of the harder parts and we're going to take like an old credit card slowly ease up the back of this laptop and not force it at all. So let me get a card and we'll get to work on that. So I've got a couple cards here. This is a real thin one. The other one here is a little thicker. And I'm going to slowly go around the edge little by little and pry up the back of this machine. And if it gives me any kind of resistance at all in any of these spots, I'm going to make sure I'll go back through and make sure that I don't still have a screw in there anywhere that's holding it up. Alright, so after about 10 minutes of trying to figure out why I couldn't take the back off this laptop, I realized that there was a screw underneath a little warranty sticker. And once I located that and removed it, it was quite easy to take the back off. Luckily I didn't try to force it. Um, so now we will move on to the next segment. So this is the new hard drive. I'm getting ready to install it now. Pretty simple as far as the physical installation. Here's the NVMe drive. We're about to install it. Almost installs like RAM. You can't put it in the wrong way. There's a little uh, socket that lines up. 
So what you're going to do is you're going to pop it in there. You hear a little snap. And then you're going to drop it down. Once it's popped in there, you will install the little bitty screw that I just took out there. Okay, so once it's snapped in, all you do is simply secure it with this little screw. Make sure it's snug. And then you will be ready to reinstall the rear of the computer. Right position. Yeah, that's almost snapped down. So now it's just a matter of reinstalling all these little screws. So here we go with that. Okay, so we've completed the installation of the hardware. A couple of the obstacles were there was a couple of hidden screws that I hardly saw. Uh, one of them was underneath the little warranty tag. So again, that's tricky to make sure you have a the right little, some little screwdrivers, a, a number of different sizes so it'll fit. Uh, make sure you keep track of all your screws, which I did that well. Again, the only obstacle was I didn't see a little screw in the middle and another little screw under the warranty sticker. So when I tried to first pull the back off, it was a little bit snug and I knew something was wrong. Went and re-looked. Didn't try to force it off. So it is backed in one piece. So we're going to boot it up and we're going to take a look at how to set up this hard drive. All right, guys. I just uh, rebooted my laptop after closing up the back. And I'm happy to report it booted up correctly. Doesn't seem like I've done any damage to it. So that's good news. So the first thing I'm going to do here is go to my computer. You can see here I have my local disk, which is the C drive that was already in the machine. And I also have an SD card installed, which I'm putting this video on. But I do not see the new SSD that I just put in. So this might concern you, especially if it's your first time. But the disks normally have to be initialized before the computer is going to recognize them. Pretty simple process. Let me show you how you do it. You're going to have to go to disk management. We'll go back home here. Click the little Windows button. Disk. Well, I thought I'd have to put disk management, but it's already come up with um, an option over here to format hard drives, so hard disk partitions. So let's go ahead and open that up. And right away, I have a pop-up here that you can see you must initialize a disk before Logical Disk Manager can access it. So I'm going to select the, the disk 1, which is down here. You can see the disks, all the different disks. This is disk 1 here. It says unknown, not initialized. Also down below this little box, it says use the following partition style for the selected disks. So some of the older like hard drives uh, were master boot record, but going forward, uh, especially with uh, Windows 11, uh, you want to do GPT. That's the newer, considered safer, more efficient way to disk initialize. So don't mess with that. If it says GPT, if it does say GPT, you're probably going to want to change that. I'm going to click OK. Right click on the space here. And I'm going to say I want to make a new simple volume. And this little simple volume wizard is going to come up. Shows how much space I have. Assign a drive letter if you want to. You can just uh, assign a drive letter to the drive. Otherwise, just go with what it's already assigned here. I like E. That sounds good to me. So I'm going to just stick with that. Uh, again, it's going to go over this. It's an NTFS file. New volume. And perform quick format. Yes, next and finish the wizard. And now you can see that my C drive is still listed up there, but I also have this E drive listed. So when I go back again to review the different drives in my computer, it should register. Let me get out of this management here, and let's go double check that. Yeah, so there it is. I have my local disk, and I have my SD card, which is off to the side there. And here's my brand new clean volume. The next thing I want to show you is how these, this volume and my original C drive are performing. And I'm going to use some software from Samsung that shows you exactly how healthy and how fast those drives are. It's pretty cool. Stay tuned. And it's opening up. And it's running some tests here to see how fast it's going. C drive. So yeah, you can see it's recognized my three drives here. I just opened the software. Uh, this is the 970 EVO SSD that I just installed. 
This is the, there is a Samsung CD that was my original C drive that was installed when I bought it, and that's an SD card. So we're gonna do some performance benchmarks here. Okay, so this one is done. Its first set of results are um, sequential read speed, 3,210 megabytes a second, pretty much about what it should be, and write speed, uh, 2,976 MB megabytes per second. Pretty good. It's working well. It's fast. And now, out of curiosity, I want to see what the SSD that they ship with the computer ranks out at. And we're going to check that one next. Yeah, okay. And this has been completed now. So on this one, the read speed is 2123, which is not as fast as the one I just put in, because that was, I think, 32 something. And then on those, the write speed's only 287, which that's like. Not too quick, especially for an NVMe SSD. It's more like along the lines of a regular SATA SSD. So I'm not sure. I might try it again. Shows that it's fast, but it's not as fast as the one I just put in. And this was a you know a pretty low price computer for all the components that were in it. So probably just use a standard SSD. It is a Samsung, but obviously not as fast as the one I just put in. And so we have successfully installed an SSD. And it's up and running good. Hopefully that was helpful.